we'll be taking a look at certs in expressions. Now it's easy to work out the answer of the square root of 16 if you remember that 4 times 4 is equal to 16. So the square root of 16 will be equal to 4, a number that can be multiplied with itself to give you the number under the square root sign. Now even cube roots could be done in your head. For instance, we know that 3 times 3 times 3 is equal to 27, so the cube root of 27 would be equal to 3. But to find the answer of bigger numbers, such as for instance 1296, a calculator could be used, amongst other things, to find the answer of 36. So in other words, 36 times by 36 is equal to 1296. If, however, we work with numbers that do not have a perfect square root, such as, for instance, the square root of 50. We could use a calculator to get an answer, but it would be an irrational number. And still, it would be very untidy to work with, because it is irrational. Many, many, many decimal places. So in cases like this, we could use the fact that the root of a multiplication is the same as the multiplication of the roots. What does this mean? Well, simply put, it means that if we take the square root of 50, we can say 50 is equal to 25 times by 2, still under the same square root sign, which then becomes the square root of 25 times by the square root of 2. So we split the two numbers, each with its own square root, and we can do that only with multiplication and division. And since we know that the square root of 25, that part of the expression is equal to 5, that whole thing just simply becomes 5 times square root 2. And that's what we'll be working with, an expression containing integers and root signs or certs. Now, when more than one expression containing certs are used in the same question, we will use the same technique for each one in turn and see if we could simplify later. So if you observe carefully, we've got the square root of 50 plus the square root of 98 divided by the square root of 8. The 50, as we've just seen, becomes 25 times by 2. 98 becomes 49 times by 2, and 8 becomes 4 times 2. Each one gets split, like that, like that, and like that. Square root of 25 becomes 5, the square root of 49 is 7, and the square root of 4 is 2. And since the top part is 5 square root 2 plus 7 square root 2, we can actually take the square root 2 and treat it as, uh, in the same way we would normally treat uh, variables such as x. 5x plus 7x is the same way of saying 5 square root 2 plus 7 square root 2. It becomes 12 square root 2 over 12 square root 2, and then the 12 and the 2 cancel, and we got 6 remaining, and we see that the two square roots would cancel. So that whole expression only became a simple um, value such as 6. Now just something very important that you've got to observe here. Notice that we choose one of the factors every single time. So there the 50, there the 98, and there the 8. We've chosen it so that we've got a perfect square root every time. That's why we chose 25 times by 2, 49 times by 2, and 4 times by 2. Each one of those numbers, the 25, the 49, and the 4, actually does have a perfect square root that we can work out. And that, that is the one thing to look out for, and the other thing is to try and keep whatever remains in the root uh, or the square root later on the same. So we've stuck with the square root 2, the square root 2, and the square root 2. That's an indication, but also the other indication would be to use a number that has a perfect square root. And in the process, we have determined that answer. 6 without a calculator. We noticed in this example that there's two square roots cancelled out. It could happen though that we get square roots multiplied by one another as well, such as the square root of 50 times by the square root of 128. Now what is important is to realize that we do the same as before, so we'll get 5 square root 2 times by 8 square root 2. Remember the 128 again became square root of 64, which has, has a perfect square root, times by 2. And then, since we are multiplying, we could multiply the 5 and the 8 to give us 40. But when you multiply the two roots, you can approach this in two separate ways. You can either say it's square root 2 times by square root 2 as there, which will then give you the square root of 4. 
remember we said before that the multiplication of the roots is the same as the root of the multiplication. So we simply multiplied the 2 and the 2, but still kept it under a square root sign, which then gives us 2. The square root of 4 is 2. Alternatively, you could say that if I multiply something with itself, I could use an exponent of 2. And then since the square root actually has a little 2 there next to the root sign, we don't always write it, but it is there. That 2 outside the bracket and that 2 at the root sign cancels each other out, and you get the same answer. You still get 2. So now we've got 40. The 5 and 8 gave us 40 times by 2, which will then give us an answer at the end of 80. Now, whichever of these approaches, either this one, when you multiply the two roots, or alternatively, that one, when you multiply the two roots. Both give you exactly the same answer, so you can choose whichever one works the best for you.